Hey, Jenna, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Trigby? I'm great. Uh, hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Trigby from uh, the headquarters here at the Busy Web. Uh, it's uh, Wednesday at noon, so if it's Wednesday at noon, it must be time for a busy webinar. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I am Trigby, the um, Director of Buzz Development here at Busy Web. With me, as always, is my faithful sidekick, Jenna. Hello. Say hi, Jenna. Hi. Today we're going to be talking about how to choose the right web firm. Uh, obviously, because we are a web firm, this is something that's near and dear to our hearts, but we hear a lot of horror stories and we hear a lot of people who uh, come to us after having to suffer through a really bad decision. So we thought it was really important to kind of put out what we think are best practices and how we evaluate ourselves. And even when we work with other people uh, and other people who do what we do, we often recommend other companies. These are kind of the standards in which uh, we're doing. So a couple of administrative notes before we get started. If you'll notice on the right hand side of your screen, and I'll show it to you real quickly, you'll see a blue bar that says that you can ask any questions that you might want to ask of us. We will do our best to answer them in a timely fashion. Uh, Jen is monitoring the questions and she'll interrupt me with those good questions at any opportunity and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll keep everything caught up. So for those of you uh, who don't know who we are, let me get back to our presentation. We are uh, a, a digital service firm based in Champlin, Minnesota. We've been in business since 99, so we're going into our 17th year. Uh, we've got a team of 14 people that are all over the world, and then we've also got clients all over the world, in which we're, we're going to be talking about today. If you don't know us and don't know what we do, we're a full we're a full service digital marketing agency. What exactly does that mean? It means that anything related to internet marketing, we can do. We create web, beautiful websites. We get a larger audience to come to them. We can retain your current customers. We can even do pay-per-click and host your website and do maintenance on your website. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about websites. Jenna, what is it? do you know what a website is? Mm, I think I do, but why don't you tell me your definition? We'll, well see it, if it's the same. Well, your website is one of the most important assets that any business has. And I, I, every she's just kidding. I, hopefully she knows what a website is because she works here. <laughs> but realistically, I, before I even got started, I wanted to spend a little bit of time explaining why a website is so crucially important to your business. Uh, really, anything that you do online, everything will funnel into the hub, of what we call the hub of your digital marketing wheel, which is your website. Search engine optimization, social media marketing, uh, content creation, all of those things go into pushing people to a specific place. And on that specific place, you want people to take an action. Usually it's filling out a form or picking up the phone and calling or actually even making a purchase onto itself. And so having a really great website experience is great for a number of different reasons. It reflects on who you are it builds credibility and it validates a potential purchasing decision. It can earn you business or it can lose you business. A lot of times if you go to a website and it's got spelling errors or, or, or presentation errors, that's going to lose you business. It also makes you available around the, the clock. If I want to see you and your website at 2 o'clock in the morning from uh, my living room uh, while I'm feeding the baby, I can look up your website and I can shop and I can make this evaluative bargain buying decisions with you. So realistically, why is this important? It's because it's a salesperson and it's business marketing all in one. So it really is just a, a one of the biggest investments we think that you're going to that you're going to make in the future of your business. And so do, in doing so, it's really crucially important that you make a really good decision on who you trust to make that to build that for you. That's because not all, all web firms are created equal. And here's what I think you should do in evaluating a, a, a business to help you grow your business. Here's what we're going to talk about today. First of all, how to understand your vision for your website and then how to communicate it to someone else. Next, we're going to make sure that how your style and your communication style is understood by the people who you have chosen to work with. 
Third, how to measure their qualifications. And fourth, uh, how much control do you have over your website? And I'll talk about why that's important in just a little bit. Before I go too far, though, I'll uh, ask Jenna, do we have any questions, uh, any comments or anything that got start, gotten started yet? Uh, no, doesn't look like Sup it. Not Sup yet. Super duper. It helps that I haven't actually said anything of importance yet, <laughs> but we'll, 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 we'll dive right in. So first things first, how do you understand and communicate your vision to someone else? So anyway, when you're creating a website, the most important tip that I can give you is, first of all, know exactly what you want before you go shopping. What do I mean by that? I mean it's absolutely critical for you to have a clear vision and understanding of what your goals are and how you're going to measure success. If you want a website that just gives your phone number and a pretty picture of a logo, that's fine, but that doesn't actually help you achieve any of your goals in marketing or growing your business. So make sure you understand what those are and you can talk about them to people who aren't you before you even go shopping for, for a web firm. Because one of the critical aspects in designing a website for other people is building something towards a goal. If we clearly understand what the goal is, we are easily able to achieve it. Next, realize that there are many different types of websites that accomplish different goals. And it's just that much more critical to know what your goal is before you begin. So what are a couple of different kinds of websites? There's a magazine style website where you get news and information. There is a company website that tells the, the validating, validating purpose for the company, why somebody should work with them. There are e-commerce websites where you can buy things through a website and have a complete closed experience just with a website. There's even uh, social media platforms that you can go from. All of these have different purposes and all of these uh, have different goals in, in, in which you are asking people to achieve by going to them. So it's important when you are trying to uh, understand what your goals are and be able to communicate them that you do understand that they can be achieved in many different ways. So that's first. Second, making sure that your communication st style is understood. Keep in mind that when you are working with people, they might not be in the same city or even in the same state as you. Uh, this is a, a very intensive process when you're building a website and that oftentimes can be thought of as over, overwhelming. So make sure that the team that you work with can help you articulate that process and what you will do in a way you understand. Now, full uh, disclosure here, I'm in uh, business development here at BusyWeb, I, I, and I rarely actually do a lot of the website building. So one of the things that we do here in order to help people feel comfortable about the process is we actually introduce them to the team members ahead of time so they know who they're going to be working with. That's a really important thing that you need to make sure that you, the people who are going to be doing the heavy lifting and actually doing the coding of your website, that you know that you can talk to them and they're, they're available but they don't necessarily need to be in the same area as you because when you discuss a development project like building a website, a lot of times really good people will discuss it over the phone or online through collaborative software, things like screen sharing or things like uh, Google Hangouts. So it's very effective to discuss your project in the same manner, but you do need to feel comfortable with the process. If you are not comfortable talking to people through the computer or being on camera, that's gonna be a challenge for you and then you would need to find somebody local. If you are not particularly technically savvy and you don't feel comfortable going to uh, a go, go, go to meeting, for example, and downloading that and opening that on your computer, that might be a bit of a challenge. I, for one, don't think it's it, don't think it's that important, but I'm kind of technical. If you're not, that is a that that should be a concern for you. We make sure that we though we offer for us that we offer uh, opportunities to meet the team and, and, and talk with the team so that the, our, our customers do feel like they truly understand who they're who they're dealing with on a regular basis. Third, and this is really where it gets into the nuts and bolts. Uh, how do you exactly do you determine the qualifications of the people that you're dealing with? And how exactly do you know that they're not just showing you really pretty websites? Well, a 
couple of things that we recommend. Number one, make sure you understand the cost versus value. A lot of times what will happen is, is uh, people, when they're looking for a website, have an expectation about how much things are cost. But, but remember, you get what you pay for. It definitely holds true when building a, building a new website. Building a website isn't just throwing some colors together and calling it good. It really is an entire user experience. It's much like building out a storefront for someone. How exactly do you want people to feel when they come to you? What exactly is the mood that you're trying to project? What are you offering them? What is your clear, distinct value proposition that makes me want to buy from you and nobody else? And then there are some technical things that you want to keep in mind, like making sure that your website is mobile responsive and make sure that it's touchscreen responsive. If you're not sure about what any of those terms are, I encourage you to look at some of our other busy webinars because they are critical when building a new website in this day and age. So keep in mind that the investment that you're going to be making in this has to uh, be shown to have real tangible results. Don't necessarily think about the cost investment. Think about the value of what you're going to be getting after it. A really good website should be uh, something that is uh, standalone and can be added to and changed as your business changes over the next three to five years. But you really shouldn't have to make substantive, massive coding changes unless something dramatically changes in the uh, in, in the world. Like in uh, last year, Google changed one of their algorithms to make mobile responsiveness incredibly important. So make sure that the value that you're trying that you're going to be getting out of this is clearly understood by everyone in, everyone involved. And your agency that you deal with should be able to provide va examples of real tangible value that they've delivered through actual results and through a website build. Making something pretty just isn't enough. Next, uh, make sure that you understand that content is absolutely crucial in this day and age. Uh, as I, I made some mention, Google, one of the ways in which Google ranks people is asking when was the last time the website was updated and was the content particularly relevant. Now, Google has a specific way in which they answer those questions and, and whether, whether or not they evaluate your website positively is one thing, but it's, it's important to understand that your website is no longer a static thing. It has to be continually evolving, and to that extent, you have to provide interesting content. Uh, Jenna here is, a, is one of our content writers, and she's a, a master at making sure that con writing for web is completely different than writing for anything else. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, she's not the best in the business for nothing. So make sure that you have a copywriter who uh, works with you and uh, ensures that that content that you're writing is getting a, a clear call to action, which is an ask. You're asking your people to do something and that they're, you're getting the results that you want. If not, then the copy has to change and you need to have, work with a, a team that has the ability to do that. I encourage you I, I, to to have somebody who is a copywriter work with you no matter what. Oftentimes you will see an audience who doesn't necessarily, a business owner who thinks that they understand their business and they're able to write for their business because it's their business. While sometimes that is true, oftentimes it is not. It, your business owner is so ingrained in the business, they don't necessarily know how to communicate it clearly and effectively and efficiently to a new audience. So. I, I can almost guarantee you that any time you spend with somebody like Jenna is going to be worth its weight in gold. You could Aww. put it there. Aww, See? thank you, Trick Me. See, was that so hard? <laughs> so my third tip for you is realize the cornfield in Iowa was wrong. Number one, it obviously should have been in southern Minnesota, but that's beside the point. What do I mean by the cornfield was wrong? You cannot just make a new website and have it have it create new business for you. So for those of you who haven't actually seen the movie or know what I'm talking about, in, in the picture here, Kevin Costner is in a field where uh, he hears voices that say, if you build it, they will come. That does not hold true for a website. If you build a website, that does not guarantee you new business. Focusing on SEO, which means search engine optimization, email marketing, creating new content, creating social media content, 
All of those things help grow the audience and help get more eyeballs on your website. So in order to do that, though, understanding how you want to attract your audience is absolutely a cru crucial part of building an effective audience. So as you're working with your web fit firm, make sure you understand not just how, do, how is the website going to be built, how is the audience going to grow once your website is, uh, is actually built. Fourth, determine the cost and maintenance of your investment. Websites are a beautiful thing and websites are great, but they are by no means uh, scientifically 100% fine. Things go wrong, things change all the time. So <clears throat> a lot of times what, what we meet is people who want an ongoing relationship with the team that they work with. They wanna be able to follow up, they wanna just ask a follow up questions or have a maintenance issue. Something like adding, a, adding or taking away a particular piece of content they need, you want to be able to have a, a relationship with those people that you, that you work with. In addition to that, though, some firms offer, so it, it, what's the overall tip here? Well, make sure that you clearly understand what the wheelhouse is in the, in the group that you're working with. Some firms just offer design. They have other people do the coding. Some are willing and able to do everything. Some people even uh, can help you with digital marketing strategy, which is you know, something we do here, we're kind of, we kind of think of ourselves as a one-stop shop, but that doesn't mean that other people can't design a website that's perfect. So make sure, though, that you understand that after launch, there are going to be additional things that are going to have to be done to your website. You're going to want to have regular backups. You're going to want to have people, you're going to want, going to, want to make sure all the software is updated. So uh, ask that question of your web, web firm. Are they in a position to be able to do that ongoing maintenance for you? And if not, what is that going to cost you in order to have somebody do that for you? Or how much is that going to cost you in time allotted where you have to do that yourself? So fourth, and this is our last topic, so I'm going to stop here and ask Janet, do we have any questions? Has anybody asked anything as of yet? Uh, no, I don't see any questions. Oh, I love it when I'm so comprehensive that I've completely answered everybody's questions before they even asked it. <laughs> how great is that? You're just that good, Trigby. That good. Could you say that with a little bit of sarcasm? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, all right. all right. Well, anyway, moving on. So what do you do after launch? And this, why is this important in the build process? It's because you always need to think about what the next step is. So as you're evaluating the, the firm you're going to choose to build your website, decide what happens next, meaning after launch, first. How are you going to maintain the website? How are you going to grow your audience to it? How are you going, what are you going to do to use your website in an effective manner? If you are one of those people who just thinks that you can throw up a website and then it will give you a new business, that's not true. And I'd encourage you to spend some time looking at some of our other busy webinars to understand how truly difficult some of this stuff is. But if you understand what you want to do and what the goal of your website is, You'll know what is the next step that you have to take after your site is live. Next, and this is truly crucial in this day and age, how, ask yourself and ask your web, potential web firm, how much control do you have to make changes to the website? So a lot of times what we see is we see a company, companies who will uh, behold their customers to them and will not give them keys to their, their own website and teach them how to make changes on their website th themselves. At the end of the day, the website is an asset for your business. It's not something that you, that you are merely renting. So make sure that you have access and control to make changes on your own website if you need to. And finally, uh, in a perfect world, you can go to one place and have uh, all of your need, digital marketing needs met. So uh, make sure that you ask if you're going to take a part in SEO, you're going to take part in email marketing to grow your audience, if you're going to have content be added to your site, if you're going to be doing social media marketing. Is the firm that you're evaluating, do they offer those? And if so, how best can they, can they help you do that? So uh, I have a, the funny picture here of the cart before the, the, the cart before the horse, but really as you're thinking about building a website, it's absolutely crucial that you actually do have that uh, somewhat uh, weird mindset. So final recommendations before we go. Uh, if I could sum all this up in three things. Number one, 
Ask yourself, can the company you're evaluating help you realize your goals? If the answer is no, you need to stop talking to them. You need to be honest with them and say it, say that. If you don't understand what your goals are, be honest with that company and tell them, I don't understand what my goals are. I need help evaluating what those are, and then I can make a decision. That's a completely different discussion. The best thing you can do is be honest with the people that you're working with. Next, how, this is an asset that you're going to be making an investment in that's crucially important for your business. Just like any asset, though, you need to have control over it. You need to be able to manage it as you see fit because it is truly yours. So make sure you ask that question. How much control do you have to this asset for the business? And finally, understanding that you are going to be making an investment, make sure it's the right investment. Make sure that if your business does change in 6 to 12 months, that your website can change with it. Any questions that we have from our, our, our audience yet, Jenna? We do. Oh, we have excellent. a question. Okay. So Stephen asks, um, you mentioned that new content improves rankings, also makes the site more interesting. At what point is it just tacking on to a site? When or how often should you remake the site and not just keep adding content? Well, thank you, Stephen. That's a great question, and I appreciate you asking it. So by and large, uh, I, I'm going to put aside the uh, concept of, of major changes in the industry. Realistically, you should reevaluate your brand every seven years, and your website should go through an evaluative process about every two years. And when I mean that, I mean that's a substantive change to your website, making sure that the, the functionality of the website and the user experience is up to par with where your current customer base is and where your needs are. So on the question of content, how much content should you be adding to your website? Uh, well, first of all, I'd suggest that if you haven't added a blog, you really should. That's a great catch-all for things like news and changing new things uh, and what's new at your, at your, at your business and also what is, um, what's changed and what are the things that people are people asking you on a regular basis. How much should you, of that should you put on? Well, Google, by and large, will come by and, and, and evaluate your website every five days or so. So I'd encourage you on a monthly basis to be adding at least one to two new pieces of content a month. That doesn't mean you have to change what's existing there, but adding uh, something new uh, once or twice a month at the very least will help you grow your audience and help you grow your ranking. So thanks for the question, Steve. Stephen, uh, any other questions? We do. We have two more questions. Super. Okay. First one, also from Stephen. Um, what are the recent trending features for websites? The things people see and decide it must be a new site. Uh, okay. So I think of the, if I understand, are those both? Is that those two questions or one question? It's one question. So I think what he's asking is, what are the trending features for websites that modern websites should have? If I'm understanding you right, Stephen, let me know from that. <laughs> well, fingers crossed that we're understanding you right, Stephen. So uh, modern trends and websites uh, right now are, are, are really going to more of a stacked format where uh, it's called a parallax theme where you can scroll down and see, uh, this, have everything kind of be on one, one page. I'd caution you, though, Stephen, based on your business model and what your audience is, to not get too sexy with the design. Uh, really, it has it, what has to come down to is what does your audience want to see, and what are they best going to do to need to see in order to make a decision that's going to help your business. Uh, we had a customer about a year ago who we, uh, in doing some audience analysis on her on her website, we determined that her audience was uh, dealing with. Uh, uh, typically old technology. She was uh, in healthcare, and so the people that were looking at her website couldn't really have a really uh, well-designed website because they just couldn't see it and it wouldn't render the same. So we actually backed her website design down several steps, and she actually grew her business as a result of that. I hope that answers the question. I think so. Yeah, good. We got to, So there's two more. All right. Excellent. First one is, oh, three more. We just got a new one. Uh, okay, first question is, uh, what do you do with all your clients new in advance? Or I think that is, what do you do with all your new clients in advance? Um, any advice you give on what I need to know, bring to my interviews, etc.? 
That's a tricky question because one of the ways in which we advertised this webinar was that we wouldn't make this a commercial for us. And really we wanted to give some basic good practices tips. So uh, I, I think, it, was that from Steven too? That was from Bob. Oh, from Bob. Bob Smith. <laughs> Bob. Well, Bob, I, I, I tell you, if you really want to talk about uh, how we do business and how we might be able to help you, uh, you can see on screen there at the bottom of the screen, you can see our phone number. I'd really rather take that to take that offline because uh, we promised people that we wouldn't make this into a, a timeshare presentation about us. So uh, I do appreciate the question though. All right, next question, also from Bob. Uh, my designer told me my site needs to be mobile responsive, but I think my site already is. There's a mobile version. As long as I have a mobile version of the site, I'm good, right? Uh, well, thanks, Bob, for that question, too. Uh, I would say the answer to that is no. Uh, in creating a mobile, uh, mobile version of your site, you're actually creating a completely second site. And in doing so, Google will come by and look at both of those sites and see the exact same content and they just won't rank either of you. So in April of last year, Google decided that uh, mobile responsive websites are critical to being uh, viewed and being found on a mobile uh, search. So what I mean by that is if I'm looking for you, Bob, on my mobile device, uh, if your website is not mobile responsive, and by that I mean not having just a mobile website isn't enough, you won't be found on a mobile search. The punchline there is 85% of all searches are done on a mobile device these days. So it's about 85% of your potential audience and being found. So uh, the answer to the question is no, it's not okay. You really do need to go back to your original developer or someone new to, to, to make your website mobile responsive, not just have a mobile friendly version of your website. Okay, um, next question is from Ken. Uh, I have purchased my domain names from GoDaddy. That's all I have. Can I hire any designer or developer to make the site? Yes. Uh, having a domain name is uh, the start of the process, but there are a lot of there are a wealth of different options that you can go with, and you should absolutely own your own domain no matter what uh, a company that you work with shouldn't have that for you. So you should be able to take that domain and you should be able to go to any uh, company you want and have them build based on that domain. So thanks, Ken. Okay, one more question uh, from Bob again. Uh, he says, sorry, I mistyped on that question. What do you wish your clients knew before they called? Can you point me to a checklist, some questions I need to be ready for, etc." Well, thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Um, really, I think uh, kind of what I, we laid out here is really the basic steps. If we, if our clients really were able to understand their vision and communicate that to us, we can do a lot to, to help them uh, understand what it would need to happen and accomplish and what would need to be accomplished in order to realize that goal. Uh, but again, I, I don't want to get too much into that uh, because uh, I promise this wouldn't be a commercial for us instead of just being a best practices seminar. But what I'd encourage you to do, Bob, is, is go to our website, which is busyweb.com, and uh, look at uh, some of the uh, pieces that we offer and, and, and see if that helps. I don't. We're not real salesy on our website. Really, uh, what we try and do is just tell people the the the, the truth of the matter and, and 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 be educational as much as we can. So, but again, if you Bob, if you'd like to talk about this, I I'd be happy. I'll be in the office most of the day. You, you can certainly call me after the fact. So is that everything? I'm just double checking, but yeah, it looks like that's oh, all the perfect. questions that we have in. Well, thanks everybody for asking such great questions. That was uh, that was rare for us to have so many questions, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, but good. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, once again, quick plug for us, even though I promised I wouldn't, uh, We uh, when we do web design, uh, we do think of everything as interconnected. And if you're interested in talking with us about that, I'd love to, to have a chat, but certainly don't have to. We also host websites and we do offer digital marketing programs as well. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about what we could offer, the first thing that I'd suggest you do is go to busyweb.com slash buzz, and we can fill up, you, if you, we can give you uh, an evaluative report on what your website is currently doing and whether or not it's really a good idea for you to invest in a, a rebuild. Uh, that's a great place to start. It's absolutely free. 
And uh, I, it's uh, available at busyweb.com slash buzz and only takes about two minutes. Then finally, uh, thanks again for joining us here at our busy webinar. These are free. Uh, we offer them every Wednesday from noon to one. If you want to know what uh, next week's topic is, go to busyweb.com slash events. And uh, if you're not available to come uh, live next week, you can go to YouTube. And these are automatically posted to YouTube as soon as they're done. So thanks, everybody, for, uh, for joining us. Uh, Jenny, anything you want to add? Uh, I don't think so, no. <laughs> You're just so comprehensive, Trigby. Oh, perfect. She's not the best sidekick in the business for nothing. So, <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll look forward to seeing you next week on Wednesday. Have a great week. Bye. Oh, it's Stephen Antelak. Yeah. <laughs>